my mother was a painter. They took me to the art galleries when I was a, was a boy. And I was drawn to these amazing art galleries. The National Gallery in London, where it's free to go in. You look at these amazing, beautiful tableaus, these amazing paintings. And I love coming to art galleries. I like to be seduced by beautiful objects, beautiful paintings, beautiful photographs. But I love to have the other elements. And I love to have social commentary. I love to have to think about where we fit into society now, how we fitted in society in the past, where we will be in the future. The Traveller series dates back to 95, 96, that sort of time. Um, it's a time I set off in a double-decker bus and I travelled around in Europe, a bit like uh, Ken Keasley. I wasn't spreading out um, acid, but um, it was more um, ease in England at that time. We were touring around, we were part of a, um, a group of people that travelled and we were taking the free party movement, the rave scene, uh, out of England where it had been sort of criminalised at that time and we are taking it to free festivals in Europe. So I became a part of a sort of an entourage, a convoy of people with sound systems doing free festivals, free parties in different places. So I travelled to France, Germany, the Czech Republic, Spain and Portugal. So the first series is actually um, me taking pictures of my girlfriend is in one of the pictures on the, on the, on the top of our double-decker bus and my friends, my neighbours, as in the neighbours I travelled with, in their trucks, ambulances, old lorries, converted old vehicles, DIY culture, reclaiming old scrap vehicles, doing them up, making them our homes, living them. So 5-4 or 4x5 portraits, very formal, trying to get in as much as a living space as possible very straightforward documentary um, using colour transparency really to bring out the colour and the beauty that I felt that we were sharing. It was, a, it was quite a beautiful life in lots of ways and I really wanted to show that beauty. All my work is personal, they're all documenting my life, they're all documenting the situations around me. Um, before I set off on the road I was living on a, a squatted street in Hackney in the east end of London and uh, I'd be, I was lived in this squatted street for about 15 years and it was two streets running back to back. There's about 100 people living there. It was a bit like, I imagine I've never been to Detroit, but we talk, I hear stories of Detroit where it's uh, urban decay, people are moving out of the city, leaving abandoned houses. That was happening in London in the 80s and 90s. Thousands of empty properties. So we moved in, we patched up the roofs, we put um, hose pipes, into the water supply, we hooked up to electricity. We became the phoenixes, raising the ashes out of these old abandoned places. We breathed life into these derelict areas. We took them over, we built a community of people up. So the second series that you'll see here is uh, the Persons Unknown series. Persons Unknown relates to a letter that we got from the courts uh, addressed to Persons Unknown, asking us to leave the property because a developer wanted to buy them, they wanted to knock down the area and put in uh, I think they were called storage units to knock down the old houses. So we really wanted to talk about that situation where we weren't even called by our names, we weren't even given any entitlement and we were just treated like scum that we could just be pushed off, off the land. So I did these portraits of my friends and my neighbours and I, I reimagined my neighbours through the eyes of Vermeer. So I set up the postures, the lighting, uh, the scenarios that Vermeer did in his paintings. Vermeer painted his community in Delft um, and he gave a grandeur, he gave a beauty, he gave dignity to his sitters and he elevated the status of his sitters, the, uh, the new middle classes of Holland at the time when they were fighting the imperial Spain who were ruling Holland at the time, Holland wasn't its own country, they were in a battle to be free, to have their republic, to have their own identity and Vermeer helped do that, the golden age of Dutch painting lifted those people. The most famous one is a woman reading possession order based on a woman reading a letter at an open window. So he's got this quite ambiguous woman sitting by a window and for me she's reading a letter from her husband who's fighting Imperial Spain in a battle trying to free the country and it's this letter from a lover away in the war and my letter she's reading this letter from the courts talking about her eminent, eminent eviction so that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to say to the local government, to the wider community, actually we're not just scum that you can kick out of the houses and push us away. You know, we are interesting, creative people. We've brought a lot into this community. We're rebuilding it. And 
we need to be uh, valued in the same way. Life and Death in Hackney, that's all based on pre-Raphaelite paintings. And again, I wanted to talk about, again, my local community in the East End of London. And it was at the time when lots of the area around, it wasn't only the houses that were abandoned, it was the industrial land. So wasteland was all left to rack and ruin. Old warehouses, lots of rave parties were going on. So I wanted to show how nature was reclaiming some of those areas and the beauty that was, that was uh, coming out of the cracks in the, um, in the drains, in the paving slabs out of the concrete, out of the tarmac. My most famous one is probably my reworking of Ophelia by Millet, the, uh, the great English pre-Raphaelite painter, where I've got a friend, uh, we were at a rave party, she was cycling back with me and she fell into a canal. She floated in the canal and I just imagined her as being Ophelia, the Shakespearean legend, but she's my Shakespearean legend. And I love the pre-Raphaelite paintings, they deal with beauty um, and they deal with narrative they deal with, with Englishness, really. They've been a bit maligned in lots of ways because they, they get talked about now in just terms of redheads and beauties, but they were making social commentary as well, and that's been forgotten about. And I try to update those narratives and update the way we look at beauty and update the way we look at our environments and the everyday narratives that happen around us. I love photography because it has that notion of reality. It has that indexical uh, link with the real world. This is a real place. These are real subjects, these are my real friends. Photography has that immediacy, that, that notion of reality, which painting is, has lost in a way because photography has taken on that. But at the same time, you can reimagine with photography. You can change things, you can move things, and it's that lovely weaving of fiction and, and reality, which I really like.